Okay, hi guys, welcome to another bowling review video. So today we're actually uh, finally going to review a fellow Singaporean bowler, right? So uh, we have with us here actually Edwin, who is obviously bowling at home team NS Bukit Batok. So that is also what we call Sidan Star Bowl, uh, obviously located at Bukit Batok in, uh, no, actually located nearer to Bukit Gumbak MRT. So for you guys who've known there, one of my previous um, Another bowler with I review, I think uh, Riz Bowling also frequently frequents there as well. Another fellow, very good, uh, pretty decently good two-hander. Uh, Riz Bowling, you can check out Riz Bowling on his Instagram. So also frequently frequents that spot. So yeah, it seems like you know, the, the Westwood area, the West area is starting to get a lot more two-handers, right? That like to go practice there, which is good. Um, okay, so today actually Edwin is a two-hander. And actually, I clipped this from one of his video that he sent in. Uh, he actually, he asked me like, coach, how do I increase ball speed, right? Like he says that he's decently um, consistent, I guess. Of, I mean, not fully perfect, but his main struggle is his ball speed. So let's take a look at his uh, bowling form first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So his ball speed doesn't look too fast, but... If we actually measure it like and calculate it, his act his boss speed is actually not too bad. So first and foremost, right guys, let's go into how you want to actually calculate your boss speed. Because obviously we do see our boss speed getting displayed by let's say if you go like Super Bowl or some of the other alleys, right? They will have a boss speed indicator. When you throw your ball down, they will tell you like what's your uh, rough ball speed, right? But take note that that is actually an estimate. So it can be like accurate it can be somewhat accurate it can be wildly inaccurate as well i think the one at like um i think it is which one is it sonic bow tampanese one one tampanese hub um i feel that that uh that speed measurement is a little bit more to the inaccurate side for that it's a bit slower than what your actual speed is so we're gonna first work out how to calculate your ball speed first and foremost is that you need to have a video recording of yourself bowling and you will need a very like um, detailed playback software such as Kinovia. So shout outs to Kinovia. Um, uh, I, I mean, I hope all of you guys who are like trying to analyze your own videos, right? You can just go and download Kinovia free of charge. Kinovia is a sports uh, analysis tool, sports video analysis tool. It is open source, it's developed by you know, a group of open source uh, engineers and coaches. And um, if you can like download Kinovia, if you like it, you can give them some donations and I'm sure they will greatly support it. You can support the Kinovia open source project. So this is a really, really good video analysis software because it's super detailed. As long as you can submit your video, it's like if it's a 60 FPS video, right? They can really, really break it down to like, like frame by frame. Um, and it's like no other video playback device has so much detail. They have a lot of interesting analysis tools as well. Like I can, you can zoom in, zoom out, and then you can really analyze like movements in, in detail. As long as you take your video in like 60 FPS or even higher. If you can take like 120 FPS video, it will be even better, right? You can even slow motion even more. So first and foremost, uh, what, how we're going to measure, we first need to know how long it takes for your ball to cross the foul line and then hit the pins. Because um, for you no know, the average viewer who isn't aware, the length of the bowling length right from foul line to the pins which is like the end of the pin deck is 60 feet so since we know the distance all we need to know right is how much time it takes for the ball to uh, go from foul line to end of pin deck to travel that 60 feet and we can just do a very simple calculation like mathematical scientific calculation based on having distance divided by time taken right we will get speed very very simple so let's first calculate let's first write down what is the time taken, right, for Edwin's ball to travel from foul line to the pin to the end of the end of the uh, uh, end of the lane, right? So let's say his ball. I think he crosses the foul line. Maybe we give him a little bit of leeway. Like, I think around here, you can see his ball like landing beyond the foul line. So let's give his a bit of leeway. So let's assume he crosses his foul line at this exact frame. So or maybe even earlier, right? He's maybe that like, he releases here. So let's assume his ball crosses the foul line, maybe around here, right? Six point two nine. Okay. So start. So 
a ball at foul line. It is at 6.29 seconds, right? In the video. And then we can simply scroll and fast forward to when his ball touches the hit pin. So we're going for the moment when your ball touches the hit pins. That means it should have exited the, the lane, right? Exit the lane. So he touches his ball, touches the hit pin. A little bit further. Because he's going cross pocket. So here, right? You can see his ball touch the hit pin. The pin starts to fly on this exact frame. Okay? So that is 9.30. So ball touch pin 1. 9.30 seconds. Alright? So time taken is we just take a 9.3. So we'll use I'll just bring out a simple calculator. 9.3 seconds minus 6.29 so he has taken 3.01 3.01 1 second for his uh, time taken 3.01 second for his ball to travel from foul line to the end of the lane right which is to travel 60 feet so now we need to calculate uh, 60 feet in terms of kilometers right so pretty simple you can just google you can have a conversion right so i have uh, googled here just Google feet to kilometer. So every one feet is 0 0.0003048 kilometer. So very simple, 60 feet will be equal to 60. Uh, multiply by 0 0.0003048. And that will be equal to, let's do the math with the calculator here. So 60 multiply by 0 0.0003048. So that's 0 0.01. 8288 kilometers okay so now we know the distance we're gonna need to measure how how what's the speed in terms of kilometer per second so which is also pretty simple we just take 0 0.018288 divided by 3.01 so we can bring our calculator again so we can have this answer divided by 3.01 and we'll get this right so i'm just going to copy this down this is uh edwin's ball speed in terms of kilometer per second so obviously we need to convert this to kilometer per hour so very simple from seconds to hours right that means uh in a minute there's 60 seconds and then in an hour there's 60 minutes so we just take this value whichever this value is we multiply by 60 to convert it to per minute and multiply by another 60 to convert it to per hour. So we just take this, we multiply by 60, we get an answer and we multiply by another 60. So we will get 21.87. So let's just round it down, right? So we get 21.87 kilometer per hour. So this is Edwin's actual ball speed. Obviously, it's not the entirely correct because if obviously for a two-hander, if you notice, Edwin's ball does take a big detour, right? He's playing really, really deep in the lanes. So his ball goes straight out way to the right and then comes back and curves. So his, his actual like his actual ball travels way more than uh, 60 feet, right? Because he's traveling like diagonally across the lane and then diagonally back into the pocket, right? Or to the cross pocket. So in actual fact, it is definitely his ball speed is definitely faster than twenty one point eight seven kilometer per hour, but uh, this is the easiest way that we get an estimate, right? So if we're talking about what kind of ball speed is competitive, right? I can actually show you like this clip from the PBA tour. Okay, so this this clip here is uh the twenty twenty PBA tour recap. Kevin William wins PBA Shark Championship, right? I'm going to provide the link to all these videos that I use in my videos. So it's uh, from PBA Bowling, obviously a legit source. And basically what this video shows is that the highlights of all the shots. So I'm just going to mute the video. You will see that Kevin Williams, his winning shot was 17.5 miles per hour. And we're just going to forward a bit. And you will just see both. Uh, so Kevin Williams' title match right, was against AJ Chapman, which is a one-hander. So Kevin Williams, obviously a two-handed lefty, throws 17.9 miles per hour. Obviously in America, they use miles instead of kilometers. 
but uh, we can we can convert this right very easy. So AJ Chapman throws at eighteen point two. This shot he throws at seventeen point nine. Then Kevin Willem throws about eighteen point zero miles per hour. So the second shot is like seventeen point six. So we have we're starting to see a range right. Then now AJ Chapman throws at eighteen point four. So we have a range of between eighteen point four to seven. 18.5 to 17.5, right? Okay, 18.1. This one, the, the the system doesn't show it. Let's see a next shot. Let's see one last shot before we decide. So another last shot, another 18.1. Okay, so in general, let's convert uh, MPH to KMH, right? It's about 18 in general. Oh, wait, no, 18, yeah. So 18 miles per hour means that they are actually this competitive these professional bowlers, two-handed or one-handed, they are throwing their balls around 28 to maybe 29, right? If it's 18.5, like one of AJ Chapman's shots, is easily 29.77 to 30 kilometers per hour. Some of the sh some of the readings measured like 17.5, right? So 17.5 is about 28. So we can generally say that 28 to 30 kilometers per hour is the kind of ball speed that we want if we want to be like really competitive, right? To hit world-class level, to compete on like the PBA level. But obviously if you're just talking about you, know, you just want to compete in fun bowls at your local leagues and tournaments, obviously you don't need to really hit like this high ball speed if you're like 25, 26, 27 km per hour, you're basically around that. So we're aiming for 28 to 30. So if we go back to Kevin's ball speed, sorry Edwin, Edwin's ball speed, Kevin is the PBA champion. So Edwin is our bowler here. 1.87 isn't actually that bad, right? Because it's about 7 km per hour off. So it's actually not that bad. But obviously, begs the question that he wants to be competitive, he wants to be a better bowler. How does he increase his ball speed? So I'm going to go to a simple drill. So he... I developed a uh, kind of like a drill. And let's see if I can like play it here. Okay. So I developed a simple drill. Basically, the purpose of this drill, I'm going to mute the video. So I'm actually doing this in my, at my home apartment. Is I'm just going to do like a three-step drill. So the purpose of this three-step drill is actually to improve the, um, like the, the foot speed of our last three steps, of our five-step approach. So most of us will do a five-step approach. And the last three steps is actually, what I find is that the most important for generating ball speed because your last three steps is where you generate most of the momentum so I'll walk you through how I do this drill myself so obviously from here you can see my side view will be a bit easier first and foremost keep your feet roughly together you can have your left feet um, slightly in front to open up your hips a bit then obviously just pretend that you're holding on to the bowling ball so take note that when I do this drill you can do it without the bowling ball first without bowling ball first and then when you feel more confident when you get like maybe 20 repetitions or maybe even 50 right if you're a little bit more on the hard working side you want to get 50 repetitions then you can actually do it with the ball obviously on the lanes right you can't do it uh with releasing the ball at home so but this drill can be practiced at home as long as you have like a smooth surface make sure to wear your bowling shoes because you want to simulate the slide as well so you can see that my 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 home isn't too slippery yeah, I kind of like can't really slide, but at least I can slide a little bit because you want to simulate like your feet sliding instead of planting, right? Yeah, I think my feet kind of planted here as well. So it's best to do it on the lanes. But uh, just to show first, uh, uh, keep your body upright. Maybe I can bring up my pointer too. Okay. Okay, so keep your body straight and upright first. So I like to use blue in these cases. Keep your body upright first. And when you take your first step, your so-called first step of the drill, right, is your left, you step forward with your left leg. If you are right-hander, if you are left-hander, obviously you reverse the, leg, the legs and the hands. So if you see here, as I play a little bit, when, you, when I take the first step, I lean forward as well. So I go forward with my upper body and I take the first step together. So leaning the weight transfer forward as well as my left feet moves together. 
Okay, let's see that again. Let's see. Yeah, actually, I take my left foot first. Sorry. So let me let me change that. Um, you just move your left feet slightly earlier than your weight transfer forward. So you can see in this split second here. Um, okay, I can't really do a freeze frame. Let me use Kinovia to to open this so that I can get a better analysis. Because Kinovia will allow me to see this in more detail. Okay, side. Okay. So you can see that actually I am moving my left leg as I'm weight trans am I as I am transferring my weight forward, right? So basically it's going together. That means as I move my left feet forward, I am shifting my upper body weight forward as well. So both transfers together. So as you lean forward, then you want to quickly take your right step, which is a very small right step. Do it as fast as you can, right step, and go into the slide. You will notice here that I do not force myself to complete my back swing or complete my swing per se. So I leave my arms or my, especially my bowling arm behind because my main focus is on the footwork. So you can see here that my main fo so the timing is important. Just move your left feet together with your upper body. As your upper body leans forward, you move your left feet together and then make sure you take your second step and the slide as fast as you can. So I'm just going to keep it playing. Yep. So the first step of this three step drill can be slow. But as your weight, as your weight transfers forward, you want to quickly take your fourth step, which is a small step. It's almost like a little bit of a hop. So I know some bowlers do a, some two handed bowlers do a skip step. But uh, in my opinion, the skip step is because they actually have early timing. So that's why their body uh, naturally went into a skip step to try and reduce the time taken for the fourth step to occur. But uh, in this case, if you're taking it fast enough, you actually don't need to resort to a skip step. So you just take a very quick fourth step into the slide. All right. So this will be a drill to practice having faster, uh, faster footwork for your last three steps. As you can see here, I do uh, quite a few repetitions of it, focusing on it, and here I actually do it on the lanes as well. So in the lanes, I'm only taking my back view. So let's forward a bit, right, and play it. Yep. So you can see that the important key thing here is actually not to complete your backswing. Yeah, just focus on speeding up the fourth and fifth steps. So go like three, four, five. Three, four, five. Just focus on the speed up. So this one I move a little bit further ahead of the camera to show. Okay. So once you've done three, four, five, you have completed a slide, just reset and then do it again, right? So you can do this as many times as you like. Uh, basically, it is a good drill to speed up the footwork. Obviously, I try to slide straight as well. Okay, and then once you're done with that, you can go into something like with the ball. Let's see if I'm doing the drill with the ball here. Uh, no, I don't think I am. Yeah, I might not have shots of me doing it with the ball though. Yeah, but basically you can do the three-step drill with the ball as well. Yeah, I actually didn't take any video shots of me doing it with the ball. But basically, it's uh, once you have done with uh, the this one with the drill without the ball, then if you're on the bowling alley, is uh, obviously if you're not at home at the bowling alley, then you can do it with the ball, then which means you go a little bit further forward than what where I'm standing now. Do the three-step drill, get into the downswing, and then complete your swing and release the ball down again. So for bowlers, for two-handed bowlers who are really struggling with a bit of a slower ball speed like Edwin, um, I can almost guarantee that if you do, if you speed up your footwork, right, your arm swing will speed up as well. This is because uh, if we go back and look at Edwin's form, right? Okay, I'm gonna expand here. So if you look at Edwin's form, basically when a bowler has like a uh, boat for a period of time, right? they will actually sync up their arm swing with their footwork as well. So if your footwork moves a bit faster, your arms are naturally going to move faster as well. But uh, so that is basically how um, the simple drill of how to like increase the, the ball speed. Uh, we do it by increasing our footwork speed.
But um, that's not the end of this analysis video uh, because I actually, as I watch more of Edwin's form, there's a lot more that I could say. First and foremost is that Edwin has early ball placement timing, right? So early ball placement timing means that as he is moving, okay, Edwin does five step approach, right? Let's see. Because he does one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so early ball placement timing as, he's, as he moves his second step, he actually moves his ball together with his second step. So he's moving his ball into his swing too, way too early. Usually, I will actually um, teach my uh, two-handers to actually move the ball after the end of the second step. That means after he has completed his second step, then move the ball forward. So that you delay your arm swing by a one whole step. Uh, the, the more delayed your arm swing, the more compact and more fast it has to be, right? So the faster your arm swing, the faster your ball speed. So I actually feel like Edwin is moving his ball way too early, which means that he actually has to delay his uh, arm swing. You can see him like subconsciously delaying it because he actually moved his ball early. And then you can see Edwin is kind of delaying it because he's moving his ball really slowly. Notice that his ball still hasn't gone into his downswing yet right here. Right, he's still holding on to the ball. He's like waiting for his third step to come forward before he swings down. So as his third step comes forward, when he's coming in this angle, yeah, his ball is already swinging up. So the time where his third step lands on the approach, his third step lands on the approach, as well as uh, the second step is still on the lanes, his timing here is already early timing, right? Because his ball has really swung past his, uh, swung past his tie, right tie here. So ideally, if you want to get delayed timing, we actually want the ball to be slightly in front of his uh, left tie. So the ball has to be slightly in front of the left tie at this stage. And obviously Edwin also has a lot of leftward drift as well. You can see how he's actually really moving a lot to the left, which will actually hurt. Um, so now we're deviating from the ball speed, right? So this will actually hurt his consistency and accuracy. Yes, it does help him to uh, like open up his hips, open up his hips for the swing to move out, and then he can like play a deeper line. But it's going to hurt him if he's required to play other lines, right? Like if he's required to play more to the right, this leftward trip is going to hurt him because he cannot keep his body to the right enough. Like if you ask Edwin to play like straight down first arrow, right? We call it the 5-5 five -five line. He would really, really, really struggle because he's, he's so used to drifting to the left. He will have to like stand in front of the ball return. In this case, right? You have to stand here in front of the ball return and then drift left in order to end up to play in the position to, to bowl 5-5. Five -five. And then he will also be so used to sending his ball way to the right that if he's trying to play 5-5, five -five, he will like send his ball to the right gutter most of the time. So this left foot drift, uh, Belmo does it well, but then again, we are not we are not Belmos, right? We're, we're not the world champion. So we're not the best bowler in the world, so we're not Belmos. So uh, yeah, I will not teach a bowler to do the, this left foot drift. I will try to eliminate it as early as possible in their bowling career okay so that is that and so his timing is actually too early uh he does okay so you can see edwin doing the skip step here so this is what we call the skip step whereby he actually does a skip and it's kind of like airborne for the fourth and fifth step so bowlers are doing the skip step right basically because uh the of early ball placement timing so edwin here is a really good example of early ball placement timing so since his timing is early, he his body right is forced into doing this skip step in order to keep his release in time. Like he does a skip step and he's like holding on to the ball in mid-air, right? You can see here at the top of the swing. So Edwin is kind of like holding on to his ball for a split second. So this holding on to the ball right is not natural. You can see here that his swing has totally paused. So if we were even to play in real real time, right? Okay, when it's actually moving, it's not so apparent. But basically in this exact period of time, Edwin is like subconsciously holding on to the ball for a bit. So he doesn't have a very fluid arm swing in this case. I mean, still not bad. Edwin looks kind of fluid, kind of smooth. Yeah, but still at this split second, it's probably his body like holding on to the ball for a little bit. So hence also slowing down his timing. Then he finally slides in. So you can see how drastic this uh, sliding in is, right? So he goes way to the right. 
So you can see how drastic his left drift is. It goes way to the left, sorry, and then he slides in. So this is a very big move. Yep. So it's going to affect his accuracy and consistency by quite a fair bit. Um, obviously at the finishing position as well, uh, Edwin doesn't have good finishing position. His balance arm is not straight and his uh, finishing position is kind of like too high. So during release, it actually has, has, a, has a really good finishing position. So during release, right, Edwin actually tilts his shoulder down. So his, shoulder, his bowling shoulder tilts down. His upper body is tilted to the right. So this finishing, this release position is actually really good. But the problem is that Edwin actually abandons this position and he actually stands up after it. You can see him standing up. So this standing up, right, is actually kind of like... Um, as one of like the the beginners bowlers too to try and get more lift on the ball because the bowler is trying to get more rep rate right and more lift so the simple thing they're trying to do is trying they're trying to use their legs to lift so they're trying to like lift up with their legs in order to get that extra lift on the ball which technically yes you're getting that extra lift and extra rotation but you're sacrificing your consistency and accuracy as well because your eye level, like originally, I've done this with other analysis video. So like during release, Edwin's eye level is here. But as he releases the ball and as he stands up with his sliding leg, right? You can see how high his eye level has ended up, right? His eye level ends up, uh, can I draw another straight line? His eye level ends up here. So there's this big deviation in his eye level and it will actually affect his consistency in, uh, in terms of looking at his target as well because his, uh, the start of his point of view has actually changed drastically uh, in between releasing the ball and right after releasing the ball. So other than that, his balance is really good. So that is a good thing. He keeps his eye on his target, which is also good. So you can see here, Edwin is paying attention. He's keeping his eyes on the foul line. So it's like looking directly at the foul line and his head doesn't, uh, I mean, after popping up, his head doesn't move. So he's still keeping his eyes either on the foul line or at the break point. So that's a good thing, good practice to keep. And that is that. We can take a look at his spare shot as well. So this is Edwin's attempt at sparing pin 10. I think he doesn't make it. I'm not too sure. Let's take a look. Because I think for his ball speed he's so, and his rotation, he's struggling with getting his spare ball to go straight. So I believe this is a spare ball, sends it way to the right, and it overhooks right. So you can see how extreme it is by by Edwin is trying to send his ball into the right gutter. Like he's trying to get this pin 10 by sending his ball into the right gutter, and yet his ball still overhooks right. So he can never spare a pin 10 in this way. So even if he does increase his ball speed, he will still struggle because... Uh, Edwin has a little bit too much axis rotation on his spare ball. It's actually still not too bad, but you can see that he's actually getting like to the side of the ball during release. So instead of getting behind the ball. So this is something like I think all two-handers have to develop, is that you have to develop a uh, end over end straight release, which means that during release, right, especially for your spare shots, for sparing pin 10, you have to try and get your hands more behind the ball rather than around the ball. So Edwin has to learn how to get his hands more behind the ball for his spare shot so that he can like get his fingers to go end over end instead. Okay, so there is that. So you can see that he's actually... Mm, yeah, so he just generate a fair bit of side rotation. Because if, he, if this ball was actually rolling end over end, it would have gone into the right gutter. So he has to learn how to get, uh, get his hand behind his ball and generate forward rotation on his spare shot. The forward rotation is actually also really good for strike shots as well, especially if you are forced to play, uh, like I mentioned, uh, lines like 5-5 or like 10-10. That means straight down the right side of the, of the lane, where you actually need to get your ball to have more forward rotation so that it reads the lane properly. And then it will go forward roll, turn a little bit due to the weight difference of the core. And then it will go into the pocket at a very nice entry angle. So if you are planning to be a competitive bowler, learning how to get your ball to go for a row is a must. Even if you are not super competitive, you're just trying to be competitive in your like fun bowls or your leaks, right? 
um, learning how to roll the ball end over end as a two-hander is also very, very, very important because it is necessary to do that in order to spare your pin tents. So yeah, if you're not uh, if you're not able to do that, you'll see that it struggles to spare it's pin tent as well. So not just ball speed, but um, learning how to get different rota different kind of rotation on your ball is, is quite essential for a two-hander. Okay, I think that's that. So uh, analyze quite a fair bit. Yep. So thank you guys for watching again. So as usual, if you're in Singapore, uh, if you'd like to know, take one-on-one -on -one coaching or even group coaching with me, I'm now doing more one-on-one -on -one and group coaching. I have uh, my, my bowling advertisement is on Carousel. You can search for me there or you can actually click the link on my website. So in my video description, I have a link to my website which uh, shows my, you know, my rates, how much I charge for one-to-one -one and group coaching. So you can uh, take a look there and if you're interested, you can contact me via WhatsApp. And as usual, if you just um, know uh, you don't have the budget for one-to-one -one coaching or you don't have the time, then you just know want me to like analyze your video for some quick tips and some general tips so that you can practice on your own. Feel free to contact me via WhatsApp or my various social media links. And you can send me a video via like YouTube, um, Instagram. You can uh, send the video direct to me via WhatsApp. And uh, tick, if you can upload your video to TikTok, then you can send me the link to your TikTok. You can yeah put, put upload as Instagram shot, YouTube shot, and then you can send me the link there right as well through your various social media panel uh, channels, and I can analyze your videos there for free, of course. Okay. As again, thank you for watching, and if you enjoy my content, you can also sub support me by subscribing to my channel as well, where I will post uh, more educational uh, content for bowlers. And see you guys next time.